I pray that I am not the one who will speak, but God will speak. Yeah. Just a few questions um, today, so not proof points. No, I. <laughs> I think I. That yeah, that's probably a good one. Today I want to speak about you. I want to speak about us. I want to speak about our identity. I want to speak about why we are here. Um, What is your life's purpose? Um, When you wake up in the morning, um, what, what sort of purpose is it? What is your life's purpose? When you think about yourself, have you tried to answer the question of why am I here? What am I doing on the face of this earth? Is it that God got bored one day and decided to put together something to mold Joseph Dakuma and say, hmm, let's go, go to the earth, go and do what you do and that's it. What, what, what goes into your identity? How do you see yourself, right? Um, if someone asks you, what are you doing on the face of this earth? How do you answer it? Where do you take your identity from? Someone says that we are all born originals, but most of us die as carbon copies. I'll explain. You are an original when you come into the world. There's nobody like you. The science even says that there's nobody like you. Um, You are unique. The Bible talks about how you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Which means that there's really no one like you. Where do you take your identity from? By the time you exit the scene, will you be identified with somebody else? A lot of us take our identity from a number of things, right? So the guy who has the Rolex watch, the guy who drives the Bugatti, the guy who has the the G-Wagon, right? The guy who wears those brands. That is where your identity is. Now, because usually we have an identity crisis, um, we, we, we don't really know or have a sense of self. Our identity is found in others or in other things because we tend to believe that we are not a brand enough. So our identity has to be found in the sort of things that we wear or the sort of things that we have. That is our identity. If I asked you today who you are, you are perhaps going to be identified with something. Because clearly we want to be others. We want to be someone Our sense of self and identity is found in others. Beloved, success is predictable. And so is failure. Now, I I don't have to be Pastor Evans to tell you that if you have exams tomorrow and you haven't read your notes, you haven't read your book, you didn't go to class. I can predict that you fail. Yeah. There are days I've gone into the examination room and I know that this people, if I pass, it's a miracle. Because as usual, I wait for one week to exams before I open my book. And I'd like to think I'm Superman so I can cram everything into my head. There was this day I took coffee. Back at the university, I took coffee. Um, I read I, I, the first time I had read the book was the night before the exams I opened the book, read from um, I think 6pm 6, 6 to the next day 5am or so took coffee read the book slept a little bit, the paper was around 8.30 or 9 o'clock when I went to sit behind the paper I went blank then I realized that there's no shortcut to life process so success is predictable so is failure now what I want to tell you is that your success is important to God's image your success God is interested in your success your success 
is important to God's image. The success of every product protects and validates the reputation of the manufacturer. This is a borrowed saying. The success of every product is important to validate the reputation and to protect the manufacturer. I will explain. When a manufacturer makes a product, what do they do? What do they put on it? What do they put on it? They put their label on it. When a manufacturer makes a product, they put their label on it. Some brands have become household brands because of their success rate. So when you go to household appliances, people can give you all kinds of names. Before the archives and the rest come below. I'm sorry if you have an archive, it's okay, but it's just not, it's just not in the same league like your Philips. It's okay, you can use it. I mean, your Toyota Corolla is not in the same league as your G Wagon. They are not the same. I mean, you, you, you can, you can, you can tell us that you, when you sit in it, it moves. Sometimes that's what we all do. This phone, my colleagues in the office have been chasing me to change this phone for as long as I can. I think it has been stopped updating. The last, uh, the last iOS update on it has, it has stopped. It doesn't update anymore. But I keep saying that, Charlie, as long as I can hear when you call me, I am okay. Right? But yeah, I mean, this is not in the same league as the others. It's, it's, it's seven. It's seven. I, I hear you people are around 15 or 16 or something like that. I don't even know where, where we are now. But this is, this is seven. Fred, yours is what? Uh, uh, 17. <laughs> Folks, the reason why the manufacturer puts a label on the product is because they can vouch for the success or the effectiveness of the product. They are saying we warranty and we guarantee. The two are not the same. I won't attempt to ask what the difference is between a warranty and a guarantee. The manufacturer is saying I can guarantee and warranty that this product will work. But before they put the label on the product, what do you think they do? They test it. Walk with me, I'm going somewhere. They test it. They test it to prove that it works. Before it comes out of manufacturing line and put their label on it. Once they put their label on it, the whole organization backs the quality of that product. It is, it is, it is to their benefit that the product works as they say it should. That is why sometimes they actually recall the products from the market to say that we have identified a manufacturing defect on the basis of that. But or I don't see them recalling cars in Africa. I don't know what we have done wrong. But it looks like we don't we don't get people recalling cars here. I want to take my car and go and take another one. But I don't they don't do it here. I don't understand. Why? We don't buy new cars. Receive grace to buy new cars. Now they are even assembling it here. Why can't you go and buy some? It should be relatively cheaper, isn't it? So I, I, I'm coming back to the point where I'm saying that the success of the product protects and validates the reputation of the manufacturer. So the manufacturer is saying, I have tried and tested the product and I can prove that this product works. 
please understand. It is not for you. They don't know you. They really don't care about you. They don't know who is going to use that iPhone that they have made. But they are sure that this product, after it has gone through rigorous testing, they put their image behind it. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that you were created in the image of God, in case you haven't noticed. It means that your success is important to God. It is to validate his reputation as God. It's not about you. So God is definitely interested in you and what you do. He says, let us create man in our image and our likeness. So you are the likeness and in the image of God. He has put his label on you. God is the manufacturer. You are the product. What does that mean? It means that just like the manufacturer, before he put his label on the product, he had tried and tested it to say that I have guaranteed and have warranty that this product is going to work. And sometimes we do have manufacturing defects. But the Bible says that everything that God created was good. God is not a manufacturer who has manufacturing defects. You do not have a manufacturing defect. What this means is that you have been tried and tested before you came out. He told Jeremiah 1.5, he says what? Before you were formed, I knew you. Before you came out of your mother's womb, I had sanctified and ordained you as a prophet unto the nations. Which means that at the time you were born, you were already a success. Because the proof is that the image of God was put on you when you were leaving your mother's womb. Which means that there has, there has been a trial. God is warranting and guaranteeing that you, you are a success. But, do you realize that when you buy a product from the manufacturer, he puts a book in the product. He puts a manual in the product. So while you are a success, the manufacturer can prove that you will work. God can prove that he has tested you. At the time you are coming out, he is sure that you are a success story. But there is a manual. That's why sometimes you buy an equipment and all you, you read is how to put it on and put it off. Most of, it, most of us, we don't even read the book. We, we perhaps just read the first two pages. How many of you have read the entire manual of your products? Only, only the Konopan will raise his hand that he has read the entire product. I don't remember even looking at the manual. Most of the time, you, you check how do I put it on and how do I put it off. Yes, until you get a problem. Then you go to the man and try to figure out how do I troubleshoot? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, mercy on all of us. Until, until we get into problems, we will not know that there is a manual that we should go to. So, you buy a car, you buy a, a Bugatti Veyron which can move from 0 to 60 kilometers per hour in maybe 5 or 10 seconds. But you don't know. You are using it like a tickle. So you are on the Accra road and you are moving slowly. First gear. You are underutilizing the car. It is the fastest street legal car in the world. But you are driving it around like a tickle. Why? Why? 
Why are you doing that? Why are you misfiring? Because you see, God can guarantee that if you open this book, you will discover your fullest potential. So you have to go into the manual that will bring you the success that you require. Everything is here. Open it. Open it. You are a success, but you have yet, you have not yet discovered who you truly are. So you are beginning to think that you are Mr. A or Mr. B. You are beginning to use labels as your identity. You have an identity crisis. But once you go into the manual, suddenly you will begin to discover who you truly are. Because the manufacturer who already says you will work has set conditions for the thing to work. The only way the guarantee and the warranty works is when you operate it according to the manufacturer's instructions. If you decide to use it anyhow, your warranty and your guarantee is no longer valid. It is vitiated because you have misapplied it. When you are crying... That where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Moses? Where is the God of um, what? Who else? Jacob. Where is the God of Isaac? God is asking, where are the Elijahs of God? Where are the Moseses of God? Where are the Jacobs of God? Why do you sell yourself so short? Why don't you know who you truly are? Because you have decided that you will read one page of the manual, which tells you that when you wake up, all you are doing in this life is to eat, go to work, sleep, have children, go back to work, eat, sleep, have children. You think your life is about that. So you are just giving birth. Ah, yes, some people don't like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are men that the Bible describes. It says Elijah was a man of like passions. Such a man called fire from heaven. A man declared that there will be no dew or rain. But at his word, and God was required to listen. You know why I know God listened? Because at some point God told him to go to Zarephath owned by Sidon. Why? Because there was drought. Imagine that the man declared that there will be no rain or dew and God listened. There was a man who caused the sun and the moon to stand still. There were men who stood and negotiated with God. The Abrahams. They said, you can't do what you are doing, God. This is not you. The Bible says God repented. Thank you. Why don't you stop or quit aiming and start firing on all cylinders? It is enough You have been aiming long enough. Start shooting. Start firing on all cylinders. Do you not want to be remembered for the greater good and for the greater things? Do you want to pass through life like everybody else? Eat, sleep, and go to work. Eat, sleep, and go to work. And complain that life is boring. You have not yet discovered who you are. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, he says, if a man can make or write a better book or preach a better sermon, or if he builds his house in the woods, the world will make a beeline to go and look for him. Have you not been in a situation where they say that some fufu joints be somewhere? 
In Kumasi, they will tell you there's some Jehu joint be somewhere. Wachi has become a brand these days in Accra. I don't understand where he came from. So there is Muni Wache, there is Adabaka Wache, then there is the, there are pork, different pork joints. Uh, I'm sorry, I like pork, but my wife cannot hear. They say I should stop eating it. I don't know when I will stop. Ah, no. I, I need five pounds. Eh? Friends, you are selling yourself short because you have yet to discover who you truly are. Your identity is in the manual by the manufacturer who says that if only you will open the manual, you will discover that what you are deploying today is 10% of your potential. Your identity is not who you think you are today. You are afraid of what you have. That is why you are not reading the manual because you are more powerful than what you think you are today. If only you will rise up. If only you will rise up. It says arise and shine. It didn't say sit down and shine. Arise and shine for thy light has come. When the light comes and you are sitting down, you will not be a reflection. You've got to be standing when the light comes. The glory of the Lord will rise upon you when you are standing. Do something with your life. Put in an effort. Determine to be the most excellent at what you do. They say that if you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Don't stand still. Progress is in when you keep moving. Step at a time. One step at a time. That is when you will make progress. Ultimately, we are here for the glory of of God, but will God be proud of who you are today? When he thinks of his son, will he be proud? When he thinks of his daughter, will he be proud of what you have become today? Have you become fully deployed? Have you been spent? Paul said that he can determine when he wants to depart. Because he has concluded that he has fought the good fight. He has run the race. He has kept the faith. Can you come to the point where you tell yourself, I have done all that there is to do. I am fully spent. It is time for me to depart. You can validate yourself to say, I have proven beyond all reasonable doubt. That I have lived in God's image. Today I came to provoke you to understand that what you are today is not what you you are to become. You have 90% not deployed. You, you, I, I know you would like for me to think you have 50% deployed. You are 10% deployed. Think about adding another 10 to it. Another 20, another 30, another 40 to it. Just imagine. I know it scares you, but just imagine what you can do. To repeat again the words of Martin Luther King Jr. And I quote him. He says that if ever you found an opportunity to sweep, sweep like Michelangelo painted. He says sweep like Shakespeare wrote poetry. He says sweep like Beethoven composed classical music. What he is saying is that sweep so that even the angels and the host of heaven will rise and say there lived a sweeper who did his best to God's glory. He is asking you to become the fullest potential of what you are. Your version today is not the maximum that you can achieve for God. You have a maximum that you have not reached. Your potential has not been discovered. If you keep ignoring this book, you will not discover that potential because the manufacturer is sure and can warranty that once you open the book, 
and you operate it the way he requires you to operate it, you will become that which God wants you to become. I need you to make a commitment today. I need you to understand that the mind is the standard of man. That you've got to conquer your fears. You've got to break all limitations. Yeah. And I need you to commit today that you will live here and go and become the best version of yourself. You will no longer live in mediocrity. You will no longer be deployed at 10%. You will no longer be moving as a G wagon on the Kakumas road like a Tiku. You have not yet determined who you are. The way that thing can annoy me. Sometimes I feel I'm driving a fast car. And then you see some Corolla will come and bypass me. And I'm sitting in my, my V6 Mercedes. I'm like, what the heck is, what is, what is this? How? Yes, please be sorry. Don't be passing a Mercedes V6 uh, with your Toyota Corolla like that. You, you, you don't understand. They are not the same cars. One is a car, one is a machine. They are not the same. Please, next time you do that, apologize. Because if you know how intricate that car was woven and manufactured. If you understand that that car was fearfully and wonderfully made, if you only you discovered Yes, I'm provoking you to go and buy a, a, a Bugatti. Go and buy all these uh, What are their names? Bo? I see some funny Chinese ones. I don't even know the name of the brand. And, um, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm confident that once you have discovered who you are, you will become fully deployed. Then, because you see, sometimes you can be sitting in that so-called fast car brand, but because you don't know who you are, the guy sitting in the other car, you will think that there's nothing happening in your life. Suddenly you want to identify like that one. You want to eat like the pigs. The prodigal son, that is what happened to him. He didn't realize who he was. But he rediscovered himself at a point and said, no, I've got to leave this place and go back to where I came from. So it is not too late to rediscover yourself. It is never too late to rediscover who you truly are. You just need to make a determination to go back and read the manual to tell who you truly are. Once you go back to it, it is never too late for anyone. You will come to the full realization of your potential. I commend you to the words of grace that the Lord himself will bless you. He will cause you to be fully deployed. He will help you to rediscover who you are. That today you will live here making a commitment that God is interested in your success. He has put his label on you because he created you in his image. He understands that you have been tried. At the time that he was releasing you, he could confirm, warranty and guarantee that you will be a success. But he is saying that there are special conditions for you to become that success. It is your job to discover it. And he has even provided a manual for you to discover what he requires of you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, he says, call unto me and I would answer and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know all you need to do is to go back to the manual, call unto him he will answer and he will show you great and mighty things that you can discover yourself
today may the Lord himself quicken you may he empower you I commend you once again to the words of his grace that you will become what you are required to become God bless you go on and go and do mighty things. Thank you very much.